Okay, we're officially recording now. So let me go back to our share and welcome to Team Tom officially for February 28th. Um, this week we're going to be talking about above the line coaching. Um, so we're going to dive into this PowerPoint. This is Habit of Transformational Leadership number two. So if you're you're newer to Optavia and you've never heard of Habits of Transformational Leadership, that's okay. Um, they are in Coach Answers. So if you get really inquisitive after this and you're like, what are the Habits of Transformational Leadership? You can go in the Coach Answers website. That's coachanswers.optavia.com. Loads of information in there. Um, you can just, you know, type in the search bar. Um, habits of Transformational Leadership, and it'll pop up all six of them. Um, so this is number two. I take responsibility. I play above the line. So we're going to talk about the the mindset that comes from that and then how we can avoid things like the drama triangle and everything. So it all starts with your mind, and you'll see this little diagram that's on the, on the side. Uh, we're going to dive into that a little bit more, but your mind is really broken up into two parts, conscious mind and subconscious mind and then there's your body. So uh, the powerful thing to understand here is our thinking, which originates in our conscious mind, is ultimately what produces results because everything flows from that point. Um, and your mind is the greatest power in all of creation. So what we're looking at first, as you can see, I got a little outline here, but conscious mind. So this is where everything originates from and where you choose. So this is how your choices originate, where everything comes from. In your conscious mind, you have the power to accept or reject ideas. This is what we call your thinking mind. So this is where everything starts. Unfortunately, everybody doesn't go into that conscious leadership and, and doesn't make conscious decisions. So when we're not making conscious decisions, what happens is our subconscious mind takes over. It can't reject, it has to accept. So whatever negative influences are coming in, um, and think about you know when you go to a social gathering or you, um, you have some kind of event that you're going to and you're surrounded by unhealthy choices. Well, if you aren't conscious in that moment and you didn't plan ahead or you didn't decide ahead of time that you were gonna stick to your guns, your subconscious mind takes over and it doesn't have the power to reject it. It feeds off of emotion. You see, this is your emotional mind. So it doesn't, it doesn't have the, the ability to determine what's the difference between what is real and what's imagined. So when you get in that situation and you haven't been a conscious person going into it, oh, I guess, um, then your subconscious mind takes over. I mean, your subconscious mind is rooted in emotion and you know take a second to put in the chat put one in the chat if you have been guilty of emotional let me get um make sure somebody's muted uh, i know i was a huge emotional eater well where does that stem from it stems from <clears throat> you're you're not thinking about what you're going to do you don't make a plan you just run off of your subconscious mind, which falls into the category of being an emotional thing. So your subconscious mind takes over. And when your subconscious mind takes over, you do what feels right. Well, what feels right isn't always the best choice. <laughs> so I've all been guilty of that. And then lastly, you, you have your body. So your body is action driven and whatever flows from your mind. So your mind flows down and it, it drives your actions. So we could talk about this a long time because there's so much to learn from this that whatever our, uh, our mind decides is what drives our actions. Even going back to, you know, I know you guys know about structural tension and, and how that's created with your current reality versus your desired outcomes. When you start doing things like that and you become very conscious of what you want to achieve, then that flows through and you, your body gets into action and it actually starts working on the things that you want to achieve. Whereas if you don't put the time into it to think about it and you're just kind of flying by your, uh, you know, whatever happens, happens. Um, we have a lot of coaches that have some success just kind of flying by the seat of their pants for lack of a better term. 
But when you really start putting your mind into it and start thinking about what you want to achieve, that's where it drives the actions that you then deem necessary to achieve those things. And that's the power of, um, you know, the structural tension and stuff that we do. So kind of summing this part up, your conscious mind is your thoughts, your subconscious mind is your feelings, and your body is your actions. But when you combine your thoughts, your feelings, and your actions, that's what makes up your attitude. And I put, you know, some divisions here because people call this different things, right? Frequency um, is kind of like a, um, a hot topic right now with Optavia, like get on a higher frequency and you attract people on that frequency. Well, our attitude and our frequency and our energy are all sort of like interchangeable things, right? So they all sort of mean the same thing. And, you know, I've talked a lot with my um, clients and my team and did a live video recently about um, we choose our attitude and we, cho we can choose to be grateful and go into, uh, you know, our day and go into our situations with our clients and go into our situations with our coaches and our teams with a with a with an attitude of gratefulness and that starts to appear in your mind you decide that before you know so if you have some type of situation that you're dealing with or you have a client that writes you and they have some sort of complaint or some type of negativity or whatever you choose before you interact that you're going to go into that with a positive attitude and um, an attitude of gratitude for what Optivia has helped you do and what you know that they can achieve. And once you go into it with that attitude, it changes everything because the, your frequency is different. The energy that you're bringing into that situation is different. So I hope this is helpful. It really helped me to see this diagram because I'm a visual person. So um, for me to, to understand that, that everything starts here in my conscious mind, and my thoughts and that I have control over my subconscious mind and my body based on what my thoughts are and where I start helped me so much. So what's next leadership and staying above the line. And what does that look like for coaches? So this is more of a specific um, type of thing. When a problem arises, you work to create a solution, not solve a problem. And I know that sounds very similar, but there's a mindset change there. There's a, there's a shift to what you're trying to create. You know what I mean? It's, it's a shift away from the problem I'm trying to solve to what I'm trying to create. And, you know, in the very beginning of the Habits of Health book, we talk about these same types of things in being um, that a lot of people come into their health journey trying to solve a problem. You know, they, they want to lose this amount of weight or they are um, on blood pressure medicine. They want to get off of it. And that's okay. That's what most of us do. We come into um, a situation trying to solve a problem. That's what kind of motivates us and gives us that emotional conflict to get us started on something. But the truth is, is what we're trying to do is shift to what we're trying to create. And with our clients, it's trying to help them understand that what they're doing is trying to create optimal health and that they're not just trying to solve the X, Y, Z problem. Oh, somebody's unmuted. Let's see if I can find them. Is that me? It's you. I got you. All right. So, um, you can see here above the line is what leaders do, right? It's, it's, you know, that is, it takes some work. It takes some practice. It takes, um, a lot of learning and growing being below the line is what most humans are. It's natural. It's natural for us to go below the line. So above that, you see humility is the foundation of being above the line in a conscious leader. So have humility and give yourself grace and, you know, being a, being a conscious leader and being above the line has nothing to do with being a know-it-all or um, having all the answers. And it has everything to do with being humble and giving yourself grace and giving your clients and your coach teams grace. So the drama triangle, put a, put a three in the chat. If you have heard about the drama triangle before, because the drama triangle is some life changing stuff. Um, if you can wrap your mind around the drama triangle and how this happens in every interaction in your life, 
um, which also means it's going to happen with your clients. It's going to happen with your coach teams. It's just part of what we do where we, we, we by nature want to fall into this drama triangle um, because, <clears throat> because by nature um, we are below the line usually. So there's three parts to play in the drama triangle. There is the rescuer and the hero, same thing. There's the victim and there's the persecutor or the villain. So you can see the rescuer, the hero, is always like, oh, poor you, oh, let me help you, or, you know, I know I can do this and it will make your life better. That is, that is being in a hero role. And I was super, super ridiculously guilty of being a hero coach. And what you think in your mind is like, oh, a hero coach, that's actually a good thing because you can help people. No, 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 a hero coach helps people play a victim you are enabling them to become a victim or even stay in a victim role. Um, so to the victim, poor me, that's what a victim is, or life happens to victims, right? Um, you ever had a friend or a family member that life is always happening to them? Um, everything's dramatic. Everything's, I, there's nothing I can do about it. It's just the way it is. You know, that is a classic like victim person. Um, and then you have the persecutor or the villain who is a blamer. It's, 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 they look at the victim and they say, it's all your fault. You just need to do this. And if you would do this differently, then you wouldn't have to deal with that. You know, it's, it's blame, 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 you know? And so, um, look at this for a second and realize where you naturally gravitate to because we all naturally gravitate to one of these things. Um, but the truth is, is if you really start thinking about it and breaking it down, we all play all these roles at some point. We all kind of move through them. And so what is our goal? Our goal is to avoid the drama triangle, right? To break free of this nasty cycle of hero, victim, villain. So how do you break free of that? A victim, if you naturally gravitate towards the victim role, um, you are encouraged to become outcome oriented as opposed to problem oriented, like we talked about earlier. You take responsibility, which is what we do as leaders in our I habit of uh, transformational leadership, and resolve, focus on resolving the dynamic tension, you know, the difference between current reality and envisioned goal, by taking incremental steps towards the outcomes that he or she's trying to achieve. So instead of being a victim and there's a problem and it's happening to me and there's nothing I can do about it, you become a creator and you become a person that looks for solutions to what the problem is instead of um, trying to fix what caused the problem. Um, that's the difference with a victim. If you gravitate to the hero, guess what? You become a coach. So that's a perfect role <laughs> for us to learn a lot about because that's what we do. Um, a coach <clears throat> is someone that when you, when you are a hero, you, you're encouraged to ask questions instead of tell, right? Um, and this kind of moves us away also from that, that mentality of, of selling and telling, which a lot of us come into this with, especially if we have some kind of background in marketing or sales. Uh, our job is to share and care. The best way to share and care as a coach is to ask questions um, that are intended for, to help your clients and your coaches make informed choices because we, we know that it's always choice. We always have choice and it's always about choice. <clears throat> uh, difference between a rescuer or the hero and a coach is a coach sees the creator as capable of making choices and of solving his or her own problems. So you're not seeing a victim, you're seeing a creator. You're, you are empowering that person to be able to make their own choices and solve their own problems. That's a perfect example of what we do as health coaches. Um, you, you ask questions that enable the creator to see the possibilities for positive action and to focus on what he or she does want instead of what he or she does not want. Does that sound familiar? This is what we do every day to help people. Um, we give people choices. We help them understand that it, it's up to them what they want most and trying to drive our clients always back to what do you want most? It's your choice. You can either have this or you can have this. It's your choice and empowering that person to not be a victim and say, well, I, I went to the birthday party, but um, my grandma was there and she made her famous seven layer chocolate cake and I didn't have a choice. I had to eat it. Is that a victim 
or is that someone that's creating a solution? So what we do is we try to ask the questions, try to guide them in, the, in that situation. <clears throat> and then you have the villain or um, uh, the persecutor. So what they're, you know, if you naturally gravitate to the villain and the blamer, um, become a challenger. Because what typically happens with a villain um, is that you are, are trying to take on someone's problem. And so you're trying to, 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 to take it like it's your problem to solve. And so what ends up happening is you get angry or you get frustrated because you, you can see the clear solution to the problem, but the, the real problem is, is it's not your problem to solve. <laughs> so what ends up happening is you get frustrated um, with the victim because you are like, this is the answer. Why can't you just do it? You know, that is a very much of a villain thing. So the, the great thing for a villain is you can move to a challenger and you can set clear boundaries with the other person and be firm but fair and realize that the problem isn't yours to solve. The problem is that person's to solve. And then, you know, like I said, we all move through all these. So then you end up moving around to being a coach and starting to ask them questions because once you take that stress off yourself of feeling like it's your problem to solve, it changes everything because what you have done is then you've taken a step out of the drama triangle and you've removed yourself as the villain. Well, if there's no villain, there's, there can't be a victim because they're not allowed to play that role anymore because you're not being the villain. And if there's no hero, there's no victim because that villain, that victim doesn't have a hero to rescue them anymore. Does that make sense? And you know, put, put some fours in the chat if that's making sense to anybody because it's something that you really want to get. Okay, cool. So this is one of my favorite things. Hold on. These are the only three questions you need to know ever. These three questions are what keeps you out of the drama triangle. And it's because you're not trying to solve problems anymore. And once you stop trying to solve problems, you move out of the drama triangle. So the questions you ask, what happened? So get real clear on what happened, what was missing, and what's next. There's no, how do we fix it? There's no, uh, what, what are we gonna do differently to make that not happen again? It's, it's always moving forward. And, uh, you know, we talk about this all the time, and it's, I think it's such, a, it's such a clear visual for me to go, you can never drive forward looking in the rear view mirror. And that's what happens when we're trying to problem solve. So in order to move forward, you have to be straight ahead. You have to, if you do 10 and 2, I don't know what you do on the steering wheel, but you have to be looking straight ahead, and you have to understand that, that you know, something happened and that's okay. It happened. It's in the past. What was missing that, you know, we can, we can make sure isn't missing moving forward. And then what's next. Those are the best three questions you can ask because <clears throat> above the line coaches, they have ownership. They, they love accountability and they take responsibility. And when you start getting really good at those things, then life gets a lot easier, I promise. It's, it's really good. So, that being said, back to grace. We are not always above the line. So, it's great to learn this stuff. It's great to start applying it to your life because that's how you eventually grow into a better person, a better coach. Um, you take these principles and you start applying them because it's one thing to get on here and listen to a training but it's so much more to take notes and to then start realizing that you are in these situations because they'll pop up and you know, it's going to happen. You're going to drop below the line again. It's part of what we do because we're humans. But when you learn this stuff, you start recognizing that you're doing that. Excuse me. And then you start taking responsibility for the fact that you are starting to drop below the line and then you start working on bringing yourself back up above the line. So while you're working through that process, you give yourself grace and you give your coach teams grace and you give your clients grace. And when you have the ability to give that grace abundantly, you don't get frustrated anymore. You don't, you don't, you don't lose your cool anymore. Nothing like drives you insane. And when you start shifting that 
to a creation mindset instead of that problem solving mindset, then it changes everything for you moving forward because you are constantly in a state of moving forward. And then what happens is you start coaching your clients to move forward. You start coaching your coaches to move forward. And when everyone's moving forward together, it's momentum and momentum is everything. So if you have issues in certain areas or if you have issues um, with certain people, <laughs> because we're, this is real life, um, and certain people always drop you below the line, reach up to your mentorship and say, oh my goodness, this person, uh, you know, John Doe, John Doe gets up under my skin and I, I cannot help but drop the little line when I'm talking to John Doe. What can I do? And then you can kind of map out the situation and try to get another person in there to see like where you are dropping the little line and how you can flip that switch. So here's some easy ways, some kind of keywords for you to recognize um, when you are above the line and when you are below the line. Like I said, we all fall into this. So you can see this, this divides it. If you have any of this going on, this is a below the line thinking. And this is huge when you start understanding this for helping your potential clients too, because the one thing that stands out to me for the last year even is this one right here, scarcity. When you have clients that are in a scarcity mindset, they're poor, they're broke, they can't afford to do anything. And we know that that's not true for 90 to 95% of our potential clients, that they, they absolutely can afford it. But being in that scarcity mindset is what the issue is. Because if they were in an abundant mindset, and even if they didn't have the money right now, they know, okay, give me a couple of weeks and I'm going to get my money and I'm going to do it. That's the same person with a different mindset that when you're doing the health assessment, they say, I can't, I can't afford it. It costs too much money. They know they're going to get paid in a couple of weeks and be able to afford it, but they, they have the different mindset and they're, you, you can't make them switch out of it, but you can see that that's below the line thinking and you can recognize that, right? And that's, that's the key is being able to recognize it, take responsibility and, and move back above the line yourself. Because when somebody is in a scarcity mindset, what do you try to do? You try to be the hero or you try to be the, you end up being the villain because you're trying to solve their problem. And it's not, it's not your problem. It's their problem. So here's your challenge for the week. Let me see my time. Oh, I'm doing good on time. So this week, have an above the line journal. And I know some of y'all like, ah, oh, a journal. I didn't even keep my journal for my 30 day opt to be a 30 guide. <laughs> well, guess what? You're on another level now because you are an opt to be a coach and you are amazing and have the ability to impact lots of lives. So it's time to start an above the line journal. It's only for the week. Start writing down when you go through a situation and see if you were above the line or below the line. And then I know there's some other coach teams up here. So share that in your, in your coach support page. My, mine is the next level coaches page. I know a lot of y'all on here are not in that, um, but y'all are in the coastal coaches page. So share, share the times when you're above the line, share the times when you're below the line, but keep up with it in your journal and start recognizing where you fall in that drama triangle and where you fall um, when you're being above the line or below the line, because being able to recognize those things is how you start taking responsibility for them and then moving yourself back above the line. Cool. So that's the end of the slideshow. I'm gonna make sure I didn't miss anything in the comments. Awesome. Um, anyone have any questions? You can just come, like pop off mute and ask me any questions you got about the above the line thinking or the, the drama triangle. Um, in the meantime, was it helpful? Maybe some, maybe a yes in the, in the chat. <laughs> if some of this is helpful and some of this y'all, it really like, I started learning this, um, going on two years ago and I'm still learning it, but it's so, it's so important, um, to really start grasping this stuff because it might sound frou-frou to some of y'all like analytical people's, that are like, I need somebody to tell me how to add some clients right now. 
Well, guess what? When you start living above the line as a coach and you start coaching above the line, referrals are going to pour in because you are helping people change their life. You're not just helping them lose weight. So you're not going to have a client issue anymore. And you're not going to have, I need coaches. Because you know what? I need coaches is a problem solving issue, right? And we're trying to shift to what we're going to create. And so when you start shifting to, I am going to, you know, I'm going to have three new coaches in March. You start figuring out how you're going to create that. And you stop thinking about how you're going to solve the problem of your lack of coaches or your lack of clients. So anyway, <laughs> if no one has questions, <clears throat> I am uh, I'm going to conclude tonight's team time. It's 901. So uh, Coastal Coaches being here must have really like got me on my A game for staying on time <clears throat> because usually it's at least 905. Um, so anyway, uh, love you all. So glad that Coastal Coaches could join in tonight and be a part. Um, excuse the laundry room like mess back here. It's okay. It's real life. I'm in my laundry room. And, um, you know, if there's ever any questions, please reach out to, to your mentorship. Um, I, I am absolutely in love with personal development and absolutely in, in passionate about helping people grow as coaches, as clients, as people. So there's never any time, you know, that, and I know Tanya's the same way, that if, if you want help, if you need help, we might have to schedule something, but <laughs> we want to help you. And uh, there's lots of great leaders um, in this community. So never, never hesitate. Okay. Y'all have an awesome night and I will post the recording um, soon and I'll throw it in the, the Fibbit group. So um, Lindsay or, or um, Vicki or Kristen or somebody can grab it and, and post it for you guys and your coach page too for Coastal Coaches. All right. Talk to y'all later. It was great seeing y'all.